this is going to be my review of Plex Premium. In a nutshell, the um, TLDR, the short story is, I think Plex Premium is worth it to the right person. Um, overall, I've had nothing but great things to say about it. I've enjoyed it, and it's basically replaced everything that I normally use, such as Netflix, Spotify, YouTube. So let's sort of get down into it. So who is Plex Premium for? Um, ultimately, I think they would be in the same position I am, which is I'm trying to replace Netflix. If you're trying to replace any other streaming service, I think Plex Premium in that sense is going to be beneficial to you because in the long term, you're actually going to save some money. If you buy like the lifetime pass, $120 versus maybe $15 a month from Netflix and whatever else you pay, you actually may see a savings by the end of the first year. However, any kind of physical media service or server is going to have a higher upfront fee because you have to have the hardware to do it. Most of the time, people run it off, I don't know, maybe a Raspberry Pi, an old laptop, old desktop. It just isn't bad. If you have some of that stuff laying around, that's perfect. It's maybe you bought it for 60 bucks, works fine. That's awesome. So ultimately, you'd only be into it, let's say $200. So you'd only have to make up $200 in savings within the first year or two. And then you might see that. But it's just a matter of, do you want to host it? Do you want to manage it? Um, I mean, it's for anybody who likes techie stuff, IT stuff, whatever. Um, then in that sense, I think Plex Premium would be good for you. With that being said, if you're going to be the only user um, using Plex, like on your home network, um, in that sense, then I would think just the free version of Plex would be perfect for you. Honestly, there's not much stuff that comes with Plex Premium that I would say is a requirement. I mean, you can even look by their Plex Pass. Um, you get advanced settings. You get dashboard controls. You're able to download your stuff. Um, and then you get hardware transcoding. So you don't, I don't think you get too much to where it's like a necessity to get the pass. Whereas if the transcoding is a deal breaker for you, something you may want to consider and try is Jellyfin. It's free media server. Um, that comes with transcoding already enabled. So if you want to test out like your GPU or your Intel, I believe it's QuickSync um, is what the technology is called. Definitely give Jellyfin a shot. However, you will notice like there are some hiccups I did notice on um, mainly friends, families, remote um, smart computers or not smart computers, smart TVs where that you would be navigating or trying to watch something and the interface would just crash. But then you could just restart and hop back in but it's kind of an annoying also um it does use a little bit more resources when running if that's a deal breaker uh i mean overall as a free service jellyfin is a good thing just to test with um and a lot of stuff that i learned from jellyfin i basically just poured it over in a plex so in that sense give jellyfin a try if you're more concerned about the hardware transcoding and getting it to work um but however if you want to try Plex Premium out, then the $5 a month isn't a bad option to do for one month. So in that sense, if you're the only one using it, you don't really care too much. The free version of Plex, great. No issues. Uh, if you're more going with hardware transcoding, give Jellyfin a shot. Just try it out. Because most way that the media server will read um, folders, files, and stuff like that is pretty much the same. So whether or not you use one over the other, not going to make a big difference when porting over one media server or folder with all your files to that one or vice versa. So Plex Premium, at least for me, I've been, I purchased a lifetime license that was $120 back, I believe it was April. And now it's going to be what, September 5th, right today when I'm making this video. And during that time, I have to say, Overall, I have no complaints about Plex. It's done everything I've ever asked it to do. Um, it's been an excellent, excellent service. And I mainly use it, funny enough, just I use a lot of it most of the time for actually just music. So at least for me, my music collection, I'm 900 something albums. Um, my entire experience, it has worked out pretty, pretty well to say the very least. And some of the things, I just want to note, at least if you're looking at this for music collection, um, it's it's wonderful. So, like, some of the things I, I tend to really like about this is, uh, let's say, this is a good example. I can look up somebody like Pink Floyd. It gives me a quick synopsis of the band, uh, read more, and it gives you a, just a breakdown of 
a lot of bands, quick little info about them. And then it also gives you at least similar artists that you can choose from that are already in your library. That to me is pretty cool and not too many services, at least in the physical. I know Jellyfin didn't support that. I mean, I could be wrong. Um, I haven't used it in about a year, so that could be something that got enabled. But another thing I noticed with at least Plex Premium, for example, like, I don't want to play the song, but if we were to go down here when we play the song, it has a service called Lyric Find that provides the lyrics. So if you're ever curious what the lyrics are, this is pretty cool, I have to say. Um, with that being said, I've never had trouble with uh, tagging my music or Plex being able to find anything and tag it correctly. Um, so if you want to just see how I have things tagged or just um, organized, a good folder structure that I found from Jellyfin happened to be this. Um, so this is for shows, series, and it doesn't really go over music, but for shows and series, this is very important. Um, Plex goes over a little bit. Uh, I think their algorithm is a little bit more advanced, so you don't have to be as uh, strict with how you set it up. So, just to show you guys, I have my two folders. So my music is set up just like this. There's nothing special to it. So if I go, I don't know, let's say one mile north, I just have the band, the album, and then the music. Most of the time, and every time I've done it, it's able to pick it up without an issue. So, all right. Now, with that being said, music is a, it's pretty easy for it to classify. Movies and shows is a different beast altogether. Um, my best experience that I've had with it is, like I said before, with Jellyfin, it tends to give a better breakdown, I think, of how this should work. And I followed this, and I've never had an issue. So, movies... I will basically just do the movie itself and the year that it released. Most of the time, I will basically just IMDb. And let's just use a file as an example. Let's do a cure for wellness. A cure for wellness. So most of the time, what I'll end up doing is copying this exact name and then putting the year in parentheses, and it typically will pick it up. No, I've never had an issue ever since I found that naming scheme. It's worked perfectly. doesn't get mixed up. With that being said, um, shows are a little bit trickier. So I do the same thing. good example would be, let's see, Bob's Burgers. So when you go to import it, as you can see, zero one comes before one zero plex prefers it this way and so does many other media um servers out there so just save yourself a lot of hassle and just do it like this um if there's another way you found to do it that's great too and then for the episodes i literally just go through and name it episode zero one zero two zero three all the way up until whatever um and this tends to work i've had this work flawlessly for I think almost a thousand episodes now. So this naming convention and scheme works very well for me and I have quite a bit. So I would totally recommend doing it that way. So with that being said, um, yeah, like I said, my experience with Plex Premium has been great. I bought a lifetime pass and within a year or two, I'll make the money back that I would have spent on Netflix. And the other thing I wanted to talk about real quick was, um, so Plex also comes with Plex Amp when you have the premium subscription. So Plex Amp, honestly, has been wonderful for me. It is, like I said, it's replaced everything in terms of Spotify, YouTube, how I normally stream. And then I'm just gonna emulate a phone with blue stacks here. So this is how, let's just do the home button. So at least when you click into Plex Amp, this is how everything comes up. I really enjoy Plex Amp. It, does everything exactly how I want it to do it. You can categorize stuff. You can have it break down. Album artist, date release, rating, critic rating. I always do date added because it's I want to listen to certain artists at a certain time versus when I discover them. So if I do, do, do 
date added. So just like I have it on the screen, at least for this, should sort everything by the date. Um, now when it comes to, let's say I click on an artist versus I already have these, um, this group open. So it'll, it gives you a little bit of a break. It almost looks exactly like um, Spotify in a way when you go to play a song. Let's just go ahead and play it. And just like anything else, it comes. What's kind of nice about it is Plex Amp will bring up like uh, the color scheme of the album cover, so you can see it's kind of blue. It changes the audio um, visualization to the blue, <laughs> their blue color, and it does this for every album. So my experience with Plex Amp has been wonderful. I can't be happier with it. You can make playlists. You can do whatever, whatever you want with it. So I don't have any issues with this. This is literally my daily driver. I use this at work. I use this while I'm in the car, when I'm out working out. Uh, Plexamp has been wonderful for me. So, and the other reason why I also changed over to Plex Premium and Plex in general, the majority of my music collection is .wav files. And what I learned with Jellyfin was let's see if i can show it okay so you can see the compatibility and jellyfin actually has very good documentation on the majority of its stuff so it has compatibility with flack and mp3s and all that but i can search for like wave files it jellyfin unfortunately does not support wave files which to me was a deal breaker with how important music is to me in my daily life so so wave files are supported by Plex. And like I said, this was a deal breaker. Um, everything considered, that's why I honestly switched over along with uh, Jellyfin remote access is done through port forwarding on your modem. So whenever you make a request to your Jellyfin, you're basically just entering your public IPv4 address along with the port number that Jellyfin's associated with. So the trouble with this is you're opening up a port on your modem, blah, 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 um, which can be a security risk. Um, so some ISPs will actually block ports. Um, and my experience with Comcast has been that it blocks ports. So Jellyfin was great when it worked with the ports that I gave it. Over time, Comcast actually did block these ports. And then Jellyfin all of a sudden just no longer worked and I could couldn't get it to work with any of the ports. So Plex is great. If you really don't want to port forward anything, you can basically just tell it that, hey, I want to remotely access my media server. And Plex offers their DNS. If you don't know what that is, just Google it. It's like dynamic uh, name resolution or something like that. So in a nutshell, it basically just converts YouTube to an IP address that you can go to. <clears throat> That's pretty much what it is in a nutshell. So with that being said, instead of, let's say, port forwarding on your modem, it associates your media server with your email and sets up a IP address with that, uh, with your email and server. So for instance, when I log into Plex, I plug in my email, my password, and it takes me right to my server because that's what it's tied to. So I don't have to port forward anymore. And my experience with Comcast was I was port forwarding with Plex. And one day at work, all of a sudden, my music just stopped. And I couldn't figure it out why. Went home, checked if my ports were open for that, for Plex. And lo and behold, Comcast actually blocked it. So... The fact that Plex offers this, their own DNS, is wonderful. You can just set it up to remote access, plug in your email, your password, and no matter where you are, you can access it. That, to me, is awesome. It makes it so much easier for ISPs if you don't have a business connection. If you just have a home, personal line, then they can, they can just block it. Uh, because, as they put it, it's a security risk. Um, to me, Plex Premium overall is worth it in my scenario where I like hosting my own physical media. 
I like being in control of it. I want remote access to it so I can listen to my music wherever I am or watch shows, whatever. Um, the fact that it comes with hardware transcoding has been great. I've totally enjoyed that. But again, just to reiterate, if you're the only one using it, you don't really care too much about setting it up or just doing the basic things, the free version of Plex will probably do what you want. Um, and you can remotely access it very easily. Jellyfin has, it's free. It's a little bit, uh, has a couple more issues in terms of just playback and just overall, it can be kind of clunky at times, but that's, again, in the future, that may be resolved. So Jellyfin also offers the fact that the free version offers hardware transcoding. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, but to remotely access it, you need to port forward. So all things considered, I do think Plex Premium is worth it to the right person. That's just been my experience with it. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you have any questions regarding MB, I've never used MB, so I couldn't tell you. Um, but as far as Plex and Jellyfin go, I've had great success with both, but I do prefer Plex because it's been in the game longer. It's a little bit more optimized. And the resource usage on my actual device that it runs off of is a little bit lower. So overall, like Plex, would recommend any questions, let me know. Take care, everyone.